All this and many more aspects of the Great Pyramid's construction indicate higher engineering skills than we knew possible in that age. But they indicate an even more advanced knowledge of mathematics, geophysics, and astronomy. The scientific students of the Great Pyramid found themselves confronting another question. Where did the pyramid builders get their knowledge? Could God himself have dictated the blueprints, just as he did for Noah's Ark and Moses' tabernacle? If the pyramid was divinely engineered, they said, there should be evidence of more than just a physical understanding of the earth. There should be spiritual significance, possibly even prophecies of the future. The peculiar fact that the Great Pyramid is the only pyramid to contain an ascending passage system intrigued Robert Menzies. Perhaps, he said, the passage system was a symbolic diagram of human history. If so, important events and dates must be marked in some way. Since he believed Jesus Christ had brought a new age of hope to the human race, he called the Grand Gallery the Christian Age and placed the time of Jesus of Nazareth at its lower end. To test his assumption, Menzies looked for a time measuring system in the Great Pyramid. He tried measuring one pyramid inch to the year, and it worked. With that method, the passage system clearly marked the important Bible dates, such as the birth and death of Christ, the Ten Commandments, the Flood. John Herschel had already calculated the date of the pyramid's construction from astronomical evidence. Imagine Menzies' surprise when two unique lines in the descending passage were found clearly marking that exact date, 2140 B.C. The strongest supporting evidence was that whether he measured forward from 33 A.D. or backward to the descending passage, both passage systems ended at the same date, 1914, a major turning point in modern history. These discoveries attracted many enthusiasts to the study of the Great Pyramid. Some went to extremes. After reading of the irrational theories and outlandish claims of some pyramidologists, it is understandable that the academic community would lampoon the whole subject. But the basic evidence is still there, and it must be explained. Again, Mr. Shalou. Many people are impressed with the Great Pyramid because of its gargantuan size, that it's a mountain of masonry. People wonder why I have given lectures for the past 30 years, why I wax so enthusiastic about this structure. It's because of its sacred symbolism, that it's a structure that has an important meaning, that it is referred to in the Old Testament scripture as a sign and a witness unto the Lord. When I read such passages, namely as this one, that in that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. I see this as somewhat of a challenge, that here the Lord is telling us something, something uh, somewhat mysterious, and yet of note, of value, that this altar is to be situated in the land of Egypt in its midst as well as at its border and that it would be a witness related to the God of the universe and that it would be for a sign that is it would have some story to tell the meaning of Isaiah's curious prophecy remained hidden until the last century when map makers noted that the Great Pyramid, located as it is in the geographical midst of Egypt, is also at the border of Egypt in two ways. First, it was in the village of Giza, Arabic for border. The Giza or border plateau marks the boundary between the ancient divisions of Upper and Lower Egypt. Second, the Great Pyramid's diagonals mark the natural boundaries of Egypt's pie-shaped Nile Delta. This connecting link between the Bible and the Great Pyramid led investigators to look for more supportive evidence. One striking fact discovered by Morton Edgar 
was that the odd pyramid passage angle, 26 degrees, 18 minutes, 9.7 seconds, when placed on an equal projection map, exactly passes through the city of Bethlehem. The number of years from the pyramid's construction to the birth of Jesus is indicated by the distance to Bethlehem, using the base of the pyramid as a measure. Another fact, the king's chamber with its coffer standing in its western end is very similar to the tabernacle of Moses, which had a rectangular ark in its western end. The cubical contents of both boxes are the same. The walls of Moses' tabernacle contained 100 square cubits. There are exactly 100 stones in the king's chamber. The sanctuary of the tabernacle was entered by ducking under a veil supported by four posts. The king's chamber is entered by ducking under a portal containing four semicircular grooves. If the pyramid was related to the Bible, who built it? The evidence is sketchy, but etymologists have noted that the ancient form of the name of Cheops is very similar to the ancient form of the name Shem, Noah's eldest son. According to the Bible, Shem lived 502 years after the flood, or more than 150 years beyond the building of the pyramid. Herodotus recorded a popular belief that Cheops was assisted by an aged shepherd named Philetus. One tribe of Shem's descendants were called Philistines, a group of nomadic shepherds who migrated from the Nile Delta to Gaza. Another curious fact sheds light on the pyramid's builder. Cheops reigned 50 years, followed by his brother Kephron, who reigned 56 more years. This would be highly unlikely in a family of normal lifespan. But the reign of long-lived Shem, followed by the reign of his brother Ham, would harmonize with Egyptian and Bible records. This would also agree with modern scholars, such as Lepsius, who considered the Great Pyramid to be non-Egyptian in its origin. Scientific insight, engineering excellence, links to the Bible, a non-Egyptian builder, all these facts led to another theory. That sometime in the third millennium BC, after God told Noah how to build the ark, and before he told Moses how to build the tabernacle, he told Shem, or a contemporary, how to build the Great Pyramid. If the Great Pyramid was intended to preserve a biblical message, why has this mystery been kept hidden so long? Surely the builders must have had some idea of its purposes. Why have all generations of recorded history believed the Great Pyramid to be the world's biggest mausoleum? Another discovery of this century suggests an answer. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs have been unearthed and translated. They reveal symbolic titles for each passage and chamber. The titles of each passage read like a symbolic prophecy of the past and future. The Descent, The Chamber of the Ordeal, The Well of Life, Hall of Truth in Darkness, Hall of Truth in Light, Chamber of Regeneration, Chamber of the Open Tomb of Resurrection. Carl Hagensick, a Bible lecturer and publisher of religious books, sees the ancient Egyptian inscriptions as hints of a very detailed symbolic relationship between the Bible and the Great Pyramid. The concept of a resurrection is one that is distinctly Judeo-Christian in its origins. Therefore, when we find reference to resurrection in these ancient Egyptian inscriptions, it places the Great Pyramid symbolic story somewhat similar to that of the Jewish Messianic prophecy of the Old Testament. Now there's another theological point that is peculiar to the Hebrew and the Christian tradition, and that's the concept of the fall of man, or his descent, in some ancient time. Genesis speaks about the first man, Adam, that he disobeyed God, that he plunged the entire race into a hereditary downward course. And this idea is also picked up in the ancient Egyptian inscriptions. They call the entrance passage the descent. 
But today, modern man doesn't have to rely on ancient Egyptian records for his knowledge of God. Perhaps the most ancient, and certainly the most reliable source of religious records, is recognized as being the Bible.